Bam! <laughs> <laughs> it's y'all favorite home girls. I'm Atria. I'm, I'm Joy. <laughs> and this is Bone and Marrow. So, what is the topic for today, mm-hmm. ladies? Goliath, lions, and bears. Oh my. <laughs> exactly. Yes. Yes, exactly. All right. So, Goliath, lions, and bears. Oh my. Oh my. Of course, by now, all of our people listening to us know that we are. How does it go again, Joy? With we the word. We are. Of, yes, go ahead, take it away. together. Rightly dividing the word of truth, sharing the revelations that God has given us on the matter. A Hebrews 412 project. Okay. Yes. Okay. Yes. So Goliath, lions, and bears. Oh my. It comes from knowing that, okay, David had the big battle, which is Goliath. Mm-hmm. But he had to overcome his lions and his bears to prepare for that big battle. What are some of our lions and bears? And how do we know that they are lions and bears? Like, how do we discern that? And then do we look for Goliath or do he like fall in our lap? I mean, because we don't go looking for trials. And right. Trials. right. Yeah. It's like you live, <laughs> you live in life and then boom, you, you, right. you, you threw off kilter and you got to find something somewhere to kind of ground yourself again. So keeping that in mind, have y'all or can you say you faced your lion or your bear? And if you have you faced your Goliath, like. Right. I kind of feel like in order for us to know our Goliath, we have to know our purpose. And Mm. like, like, you know, the deep purpose, like the real, real, like, why am I here? Existential thinking purpose, Mm. because that's the only way you're going to know, like, what's the giant that will come along and try to deter you from that. But. I don't know. I guess maybe in the same token, maybe that is what we need also to know, to recognize a bear and a lion. I feel like bears and lions are things that just get in the way in general, but they're probably not really blocking me from my real purpose. They're just... So a distraction. Yeah, they're just like distracting or like, you know... um, just irritating me enough where <clears throat> I can't. <laughs> What's the like, problem? Like the minor everyday battles. Yeah, <laughs> you just know, I don't know. I think, <laughs> why are you laughing at me? She said it's irritating her enough. Like, yeah, because I feel like a lot of times, like things bother me. This is what I'm working on as a person. Okay, mm-hmm. a lot of times I let things bother me, and really they have nothing to do with the big picture. Mm. in any way but I'm letting them bother me because they're annoying in a Mm. different context but really they don't have a role in what my purpose is spiritually you know that's some confusion for me (laughs) that's that's my (laughs) own thing (laughs) But, but like that's probably something that we have to think about we have to think about like do you recognize your purpose you know, and, and your purpose in Christ, you know, because we got different purposes going on, but your purpose in Christ is like the one thing that's going to be the center. And I just feel like I'm going I'm to be transparent. I feel like a lot of times I know what my purpose is in a project or I know mm. what my purpose is in like a room that I'm standing in, but my overall purpose, sometimes I just can't. I can't see what that is or it's not tangible to me. I don't, I don't, I just feel like that might be confusing to name my Goliath, but. I have a question. Yeah. Mm-hmm. First, you know, let me say we forgot to pray. So. Oh my pray. Jesus. We just love Let's you. pray. So we welcome you into this conversation, yes, um, into the matter. And just thank you for your grace and your brilliance with just mm. getting us here. Thank yes. you, and we love you in oh, Jesus' name. You. So here's my question. What do you see 
David's purpose having been? To serve God. Okay. Do because he was like... not, uh, like, okay, go ahead, hmm. Joy. That's a good question. Maybe I'm being judgmental about his life, but I no, just feel no, like. No, 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 no. That, was, no, what, no, that no. was his greatest gift was like, you know. I'm just saying because it's easier to God. see. We see his whole life. So it's easier to see, be on the outside looking in more yeah. often than it is to see self because you're in yeah. self. So like mm. my question, so my follow-up question to that would, would be, however you see David's purpose, do you think David saw that purpose when he was tending sheep and slaying lions and bears with his bare hands? Mm. Do you think, let's just say, maybe if we don't, if you, we don't even identify this as his purpose, but I definitely think that, um, Becoming king was definitely a purpose of David's. But do you think that he had any idea being out there in the field, tending sheep, that he would one day be king? Well, and, you gotta, you gotta... and always and from his house would always sit on the throne because that's why Jesus comes out of the house of David because that was literally God's promise unto him that he his house would always sit on the throne mm -hmm. Jesus can never be uprooted this was a little boy in I don't know what was that the the plains <laughs> tending, <laughs> tending <laughs> sheep the plains. <laughs> I just imagine it being no trees and really dusty really really dusty um <laughs> So do you think that he had that on his mind that he could clearly see that? I think his immediate destiny was just to make sure the sheep. But Sophia's talking about purpose. Right. She's right. not his talking about purpose. what's immediate. She's talking about oh, oh, what wrong. she's here to fulfill mm. and how she doesn't know that yet. And yeah, a lot of people grapple with like, what is my purpose? What is my purpose? And not to trivialize it because that's a big deal. But I, I'm wondering if when we look back at these people who we know in full because it's all written out, yet when yeah. they lived it, they did not know in full. And so we can see it so clearly, but I'm just wondering if we ever thought about if they could see it so clearly, but yet they still just obey God toward fulfilling the purpose that he already knew for them that they may not have known about themselves. Wait, let me interject. And I totally agree, but you got to keep in mind also that David never saw the whole picture because that's not God's design, one. Yeah. And then two, the anno I'm gonna use it. I'm gonna use the terminology. Sophia used the annoying things. <laughs> actually, okay, because you got to think about it. Your question, Joy, is an amazing question because it makes you think about the momentary yeah. things in life. Okay, his goal. I'm gonna use that term loosely because his goal, his purpose for that moment in his life was to what? Protect the sheep protect the flock against all odds that's why he out there slaying <laughs> bears and lions and carrying on so at that moment his his purpose his goal was to make sure that his flock was tended to and that they were protected and cared for right so then once he passed that test um, in the form of a lion and a bear he rolls to another level. So I had a question in the back of my mind. Does the lions and bears and Goliaths change with every level of your faith? I just so weren't one, as a question. I literally <laughs> just. <laughs> so that is another, that's yeah. another loaded question. So what you said is correct, Joy. At that moment, he, he had no clue to the heights in which he would rise. Because you got to remember when Samuel went to the house. The daddy was like, here go all the good sons. Hit him. Here, mm -hmm. here go, here they go. So he was those, like, but... nah, they ain't it. The he, this ain't who I came for. And then the daddy was like, well, you know, I got, like, here's some kind of kick around. Well, you know, it's the other one out there. The <laughs> one, one that they dream, the one that's out there with the sheep. And it's like, soon as Samuel laid his eyes on him, he was like, this is who that's I him. came to anoint. Yeah. You get what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. So with that of we get to see the growth we get to see how they went from one to the next to the next the lion the bear he had to protect provide and care for and did he not do that as king but 
he also had some other mini lions as well because Saul was trying to kill him. <laughs> the man ain't even making it to the throne. He trying to dead him. So, do, and what was his we... purpose during that time? I don't know. But he was a harpist, right? So yes. actually, his purpose he was supposed oh, to be playing for the king. the king, and he did it even through the death attempts. That had, wait, uh, uh, Sophia, that had to be annoying, right? <laughs> <laughs> Listen, I mean, man, what did I do to you? Okay. <laughs> yeah, I guess, I guess the bottom line is. I guess it's just obeying God, but you just don't get to see everything. Mm. You know what I'm saying? Like we can see how it's metaphoric that he is, he is protecting his sheep and then he will be given a whole kingdom Mm -hmm. to protect, right? Like we can see that because we know the story, but maybe we don't get that in our lifetime. We, or maybe not during, but like maybe toward the completion Mm, you have like an epiphany so yeah so maybe it's more like just your purpose is in obeying god or just Mm. yeah obeying god or making him the center of your choices i mean that is a revelation for me thank you for asking that question joy (laughs) because i'm like the kind of person like i i want to know like what am i doing this for why is this important to me how is this going to make me feel or what is this going to do for me? Like whenever I'm doing something, that's what I'm, I'm like calculating all the time. Yeah. yeah. But yeah. I guess when it comes to this Christian thing, that's not how it works. Yeah. Really. It should yeah. be like, you're just trying to make sure that Christ is the center of everything and, and that you're serving him. Dag on it. Now see, <laughs> I, that just erased my whole motto for a lot of things. But mm. yeah, that's because David probably wasn't, David was not seeing that. Or maybe he did. I don't know, Joy, that was a part of your question. Did he yeah, know he I was going to be king? I don't mm. ever see any indication that he knew that he mm. would one day rise to king and certainly nobody around him would ever gave right. him that right, right. they right. never made him, him right right what i what i'm getting from it is yes i guess in the sense like if i look at david there was a big purpose for his life which was to initiate the bloodline if you will right through which yeah. christ would reign as king right but then and to establish that seat like that was ultimately his purpose but i i don't see anywhere at least that i that i'm aware that god really read him in on that Mm -hmm. so to me then i would say that or what i'm taking away is purposes are going to change as seasons change and you need to and you will be able to identify what the purpose is in that season or in that space, the the immediate purpose along the way to the main purpose. And so then it is our calling to be dedicated to what is that immediate purpose until God brings the next level of elevation. And I can Mm. say, practically speaking, like this is definitely something that God has dealt with me on, not so much in like finding purpose, but in living in the season that I'm in, Mm. not always scratching to get to the next place in life because I've done that and missed a whole season of life. Like just missed it. Just, just because I was just always looking ahead. And I think that is something that (laughs) as humans, especially as like uh, those who love the Lord, because we know that he puts a calling on us, right? Like he, he, he calls us, he knows us before he even places us into our mother's womb. So he knows what we're going to do. And we want to know what we're going to do. And so we're always just trying to like, get better, elevate, be more like Christ. And we just, for me, that has led to, excuse me, at least in one season of my life, just completely missing it and not understanding the treasures that were there for me. And so now I just take more time to just honestly, like, I don't know tomorrow. I don't know, but I know today and I know what I'm doing today. 
And Mm -hmm. I'm just living in it and really like enjoying where I am today. Mm -hmm. Because Mm -hmm. also knowing, really coming to the understanding, like today's not going to be forever. And I'm going to be able to look back on today if God allows and, and, and sort of experience what I loved about it. But I won't be able to really take treasure from it if I don't give myself to it fully. Right. Yeah. Yeah, yeah totally making sense. Totally opening my eyes, ladies. Oh, my. <laughs> <laughs> oh Listen. My. That, we cut was... to that quick. No, you know, but. I, I didn't know we were going to get to a moment where I was like, dang, wait a minute. We did. It was I something know. Joy said. Crap. I should have wrote it down. I thought I was going to remember. It was so good, too. Oh, I hate it. But okay, so ah, there it is. Mm, 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 mm. So basically, the point you were making, you said not trying to rush to the next season. And normally, when we trying to rush to the next season, it's because we tired of the one we in, right? Either it's a little bit more hard or pressing than we want to be, or we're not happy in the season that we're in. Um, So when you said not rushing to the next season, so would you say that? Once you found an appreciation for the season that you were in, taking from it the lessons and learning the lessons when you were in, did you find that the season was on to the next one? And is that a part of being in the season? Like we're in a season because obviously it's something that we, the Lord is trying to get our attention on something, right? And the more we fight it, the more we com- complain and grapple and go to God, but not sincere in heart, praying it over, oh, help me get out of this, help me get out of that, but only for the facts is so we don't have to deal with it anymore. But like you said, it was a moment when you came and you said you can't be too concerned about the next season, just today. Like I know today, you don't know tomorrow, but you do know today. So do you find that thinking back over a season in time for yourself, can you you remember if you consciously started taking the lessons in and knowing that that's a nugget okay that's something that's a mindset I could change that's an attitude I can change that's a, a something I can change and you started tacking on all the little lessons do you find that there was a, a place after that where it was just peace and then the next season came or do you find that you went immediately into your next season for me no it didn't immediately change and so I'll tell you why? Because this may be a little bit different for other people who are grappling with the season that they're in. Mm-hmm. So mm-hmm. for me, it was just about like, I'm just trying to, I'm trying to get to purpose. And so I don't want to, or at the time, like I was looking ahead toward the things that I knew were like the better things. Mm-hmm. Right. Because the next level is like a level up. So the when I realized that I had missed the season that I leveled up from was actually mm. when God gave me a do over of the season. Hmm. And that was his grace. That was his grace. And then I was like, man, I <laughs> like I missed this the first time. Like, I completely missed this. This is glorious. Thank you, God, for the do-over. So, and actually you saying what you just said, it was really for me because I'm still in the do-over season. Mm. And it's splendid. (laughs) But I will tell you, truly, as of late, I have been getting a little antsy. And so Mm. you saying, like, is it because, you know, you're just, you were just tired of it, you know, it kind of spoke to me like, yes, I think I'm at a point now in the do over where I'm getting a little tired of it. So I need to slow down and I need to continue to enjoy it because it's not going to be forever. Mm. Yeah. yeah. So thank you for that. Tree. Yeah. Oh. Yeah. Y'all know I be having questions. Yeah. Yeah. That was a good question. <laughs> now I'm different in that like I hindsight is very relevant to me because <laughs> sometimes I don't get stuff until I see 
everything all together. Otherwise, I'm just like, if it's a bad season, I'm really pushing on through. <laughs> but but in a real rough way. <laughs> but I, <laughs> I'm just going to be honest, y'all. But you know what I do when the season is over? Like, I have like a testimony testimonies of moments when I was going through something. And then in the next season, I was like, oh, I'm totally prepared because I went through that thing, you know? So I'm really like a hindsight girl because when I'm in it, I cannot, I can't see. (laughs) I can't see in the fog. But afterwards, I'm a reflector. So afterwards, and when other things are coming to me, I'm like, oh, okay. You know what? I needed to go through that because right now I wouldn't be able to enjoy this or move on because I had not experienced that before. So that's kind of like how it works for me. I wish that I I would be more proactive like Joy and think about the moment Mm. and just live in the moment. Like that's something that I've been trying to work on. Just live in this feeling, not not living in bad feelings, but just acknowledging the feeling instead of uh, moping or complaining (laughs) or feeling sad. I just wish I would just take a moment to absorb what it is, you know, and just um, and just know that it's, it's going to eventually be in my toolbox. But I really have trouble with that until I see the visual, until I see, oh, I have a tool for that. I, you know, from whatever happened. Yeah. That's really hard for me. But right now, as an adult, I'm trying to consider everything a tool. Every, you know, thing that happens. Yeah, that's where I'm at, y'all. Yeah. <laughs> that's where I'm at. And yeah, I want to be more like Joy in that she is saying, like, let me be in this moment. I don't know if you're speaking of only good moments, Joy, but I also want to be like that about moments that are not great because I know for a fact that I'm going to be able to use that. I know that now because it's happened already before to me, but I just can't, sometimes I just can't like push through it. I just, I just have like a really hard time and then I get, I do get through stuff, but I want to be like that. I want to be like I, can, I probably can't see it, but I know that this is going to be useful because, because I feel like that's how God works. He knows the out, He knows the end game, and so He's kind of like preparing us, you know. Yeah. But it, sometimes, <laughs> like, all right, God, you know, okay, buddy. See, I'm trying to okay, see what buddy. you're doing, <laughs> but you know, for real, like in all sincerity, like for real, like. You know, try to just focus on what's happening to you right now. Don't let it go over your head. Don't drown in it. Just try to experience it. And then, you know, because some things are hard to consider tools, you know, but they will be eventually. And you just have to have that kind of faith and in process, you know. So, yeah, that's where I'm at right now. I feel like I'm very... uh, pessimistic but that is also a part of my process i'm just trying to i'm I'm serious i'm serious right okay make sure that i am feeling everything and being genuine because then i don't like suppression either like i don't like being like it's gonna be fine it's great everything's great just keep going you know like i (laughs) I don't want to be that girl either. Hold I just on, want to wait, be wait, like wait. Everything's fine. Everything's great. Everything's fine. Everything's fine. Right. 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 You're like, you just can't, you know? Mm-hmm. So it's about balance. It's about <laughs> allowing <balance>. yourself <laughs> to sit through it and, you know, Scratching feel. Out of it. Yeah. Like, that's that's what I'm thinking about that, Atria. That was a good Good question. I I, I would like yeah. to speak to that. <laughs> speak speak I like to, to speak it, Joy. Truth to that in love. You know, the word says that feelings are fleeting, right? Mm. This is true. So they really cannot be trusted. Yeah. Um. So and okay, you asked 
did I also mean the bad moments? And I absolutely do. I absolutely do mean that I mm-hmm. live in the bad moments as well. And I let them hit me and I yes. let them knock me around and I let them, you know, dredge up whatever it is that needs to be dredged up because the next time that hits me, I don't want it to be able to slap me around. Right. And I got this, the strategy of taking pictures when of my tears. Mm. And this either came from Iyanla or one of my pastors. I don't remember which one, but they were talking about how we only ever take pictures of the good times. And then, you know, like when you are in a bad situation, sometimes you can't even remember it because you only have captured these, these memories of what was good. And then you romanticize that thing. And then it's like, Mm. you end up back in it. So it's amazing to me how like when I flip through pictures and I'm crying because like literally like I'll be in the midst of it and like grab my cell phone. (laughs) (laughs) And when I look back, how much I can actually remember what that moment was, just like when I have the good pictures. And then I and then I can measure like, yo, how did how did how did you like that? You're right. Like. Is that something that yeah. would be okay, like, if that ever happened again? I remember how I got oh. there. Um, when, when, when you have those lions and those bears, like, things are, that are triggering you and pushing you and making you have all these feels. Now, I've gotten to the point where I've stopped, I've stopped acting on those things just because, like, okay, I believe that God is all-powerful. I, I am his child and I believe that there is no mountain that he won't cross, no, no river that he won't divide, you know, for me to have a way of escape. Like he will make mm. that way. Right. So I'm looking for the way I, when, when trouble comes, I'm like, okay. But I found that in order to do that, I have to deny the feelings. I have to, yes, they're trying to rise up. Right. I want to lash mm. out. Okay, I want to, I want to call the manager. You know, I want to do all these things because that's my right. And it, and I'm justified in, in, in my flesh. I'm justified by any standard of measure. Like I have the right to do this, 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 or that. But oftentimes I've noticed like after I have gotten all worked up and then God works the situation out after I mm. felt like all oh, hope was gone. Like I feel so terrible for not having trusted God. Yeah. So I've gotten to a point where more so now than I ever have, like when I'm hit with something before I do anything, I do nothing. I let all the feelings waft over me. Mm. I try to give God some space to move, whether that be like days, weeks, you know, where I'm just like, Lord, did you see, you know, and I'm taking it to him like, okay, God, you know, I'm, 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 all right, all right, all right. But surprisingly, everything is just moved out of the way. And this reminds me, because we were supposed to have examples. So let's talk about like, and let me put it in context. I remember, because I really didn't have an example before, before we started, <laughs> before we started talking, I'm but I do now. <laughs> so I remember I was working for this company and I was moving up through the ladder. Jobs were being created for me to be there. Mm -hmm. And I was within a company where people retired from there, right? So like they, they got that job and it was considered like a very good job because it was high paying. And so they weren't necessarily there because of education. Mm. No, no stab. I'm just speaking honestly. They were there because however they got the job, they got it. Mm. And now they just weren't going to leave. And so what that looked like for them was very little to no promotion. Mm. Same job, 50 years. I entered the company and I'm rising through the ranks. And easily, no sweat. I'm saying this is what I want to do. And the higher ups are making a way for me to do that. So it got to be too much for the onlookers. 
<laughs> and she said every- the onlookers. <laughs> Every day I would come to work and it would be some other complaint that they have mustered up about me. You know, there's just ruining my good name, saying things about me, attempting to do things concerning me. And I really was just tired of it. Like I, like every day I just remember like, yo, like this is so draining. This is exhausting. People are literally like people who weren't even on my team would come, would write, would call meetings with my immediate supervisor, have me dragged into conferences and talk about me in my face saying that I had done this, that, or the other thing that I had not even done. I watched God, not only where other people were trying to get me fired, but have them released from firing. To every day, every day I would walk in and there would be an issue and I would go home thinking, Lord, this is it, I suppose. Right. And then, <laughs> and then, and then the next day I would walk in there and it would be like, Nobody had any memory of it. Not my boss. Not, just, just nobody. Just, just nobody. It was no longer an issue. We were now on to the next thing. So the way he was proving himself really, and I didn't even really learn the lesson of like, don't fret in that season. <clears throat> but when I was finally getting to other seasons where it's like, okay, Joy, you have to see, you know, like open up all of your senses and see how God ha- has done it, has done these things for you in the past. Then again, like Sophia, you were saying in hindsight, I had, I had already experienced all of these lessons, like where God is going to come through. Like they can say what they want to say. They can do what mm-hmm. they want to do. Mm-hmm. But when, but God being the promoter of people, when he positions you, they can claw and scream and scratch all day long and you're going to feel it because sometimes it feels like well why is God even allowing this to go this far (laughs) but Mm. you know God is creative you know he's creator and he's very creative and he Mm. really enjoys like you know like the epic (laughs) (laughs) he enjoys like those epic moves that he be like let let me mm -hmm, go ahead (laughs) (laughs) so that's a thing but I so I had a question how then do we identify when purpose has changed or as we were Ooh. or as we were talking seasons have changed how how do how does one identify that how did david know when he was on to the next purpose i have one way that i actually just hmm. came to be by the lord someone told him oh when he, okay. when samuel he, yeah when he went from hmm. shepherd boy hmm. to king and waiting God actually sent someone to declare that unto him, to advise him. Mm. So I'm so I, I'm just concluding that's one way. What about promotion or growth? But when you say that, I mean, of course, we know because we can see a difference in our own selves through the eyes of Christ, through the eyes of the Holy Spirit. Mm-hmm. So we know we've grown because like you say, if something happened, you'd be like, okay, whatever, what off my back. Um, so uh, I guess it would rest in your soul. That's mm-hmm, how you mm-hmm. would know that discerning spirit will let you know, like, mm-hmm. you know, it, it'll come through from the spirit of sermon, of course, because, you know, it's not like a, a temporary thing, but it's an ongoing thing. So that's an ongoing daily talk, daily walk, daily communication with God, daily communication through the Holy spirit. So I guess it would rest comfortably in your spirit. We say, oh, my first mind, we know that's the Holy Spirit telling us to do or not do something. Because, of course, mm-hmm, what the Holy mm-hmm. Spirit is telling us to do is in line with Christ. Yeah. As we discussed before, previous to this, you know, it's not negative. It's not rushing. It's not like, hurry up, you got to do it or you're going to miss out. Yeah. It's a mm. peace that comes with that first mind. It's a calming kind of acceptance. Yeah, it's a calming kind of like resolution. Yeah. and you're like okay yeah my first mind and then when you don't when we find that we don't listen to that first mind what happened total chaos <laughs> but I digress so I would say that you would know because it'll just rest not heavy as in burden heavy in your spirit 
Give us an example of that, Atria. Dive deep. <laughs> okay, as we know, I used to teach the kitties. I used to teach the children. Um, I whole father got a name of Jesus when that girl called me out my name, Lord. It took all. Ooh, come back, come back. Come back. Right, right. Ooh. Uh, as my apologies. I told her to dive deep, y'all. <laughs> yeah, look. <laughs> <Up the air. laughs> you know how the whales come up and they. Yeah. Okay. Um, I've taught from fourth grade to high school and it was when I was teaching elementary school, I was fretting about finishing what I needed for my license to teach. Oh gosh, I need, you know, one other bills and stuff going on. So I didn't already, I didn't always have the money readily available to take the professional test. And then I was thinking about how many times I took me to get my temporary license and and I, I will say it like this because the Holy Spirit just kept resting it in, in me that you do not have to. And that's how the thought came. You don't have to worry about taking this test. Mm-hmm. And then I would question, I'm like, Lord, is this you or is this me? Every time I got ready to crack that book open, it was like, <laughs> why are you doing this? You don't have to worry about taking this mm. because being a teacher, you either had a professional license and somebody going to pick you up or you don't have it and you, right. you ain't going to teach. Yeah. So the school that I was teaching at in Boynton, I was able to receive my temporary, which would carry me. They would give me three years to get my professional. When I came down to this school, they fired me. Oh, where the man Which is why you right. wouldn't need the thing. Is that what you're getting at? Yes. They fired <laughs> me. So when I got fired, I was like, okay, Lord, c- come on, c- <laughs> come on now. I, I so yeah. keep telling me I don't need to take this test. What is going on? Make a long story short. The guy at the school that I ultimately ended up teaching at, teaching middle school, I kept pushing him off for the the advance as far as getting employed there because I thought I needed my professional teaching license and he pulled me in his office one day and he said Miss Hepburn this is all you will need to work at this school when I went down that checklist and all he said I need to have was a bachelor's degree Mm -hmm. which I had and at least two years experience which Mm -hmm. I had three Mm -hmm. It finally clicked. That's why the Holy Spirit kept telling me, I don't need to take this test. Mm-hmm. Let me ask you a question. I, I didn't mean to cut you off. No, you can uh, Does that Did that feeling of like, you don't need to worry about this. You don't need to worry about this. Uh, did it, did it gripe you like in the, like in the gut? It was very comforting. That's the only way I can explain it. It was very comforting. It, the thought would come. It was just like a, someone had wrapped their arms around me. You understand what I'm saying? So it and calmed it was, you. It calmed me. And okay. every time, it was like that. Every time. Okay. Every time. Mm-hmm. But it was, to answer your question, it was a calming. like a. And then I would forget all about it and move on to the next thing. Yeah. 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 Mm-hmm. yeah. I have two things. Yes, ma'am. Hold on. I got you my eyes. Okay. (laughs) (laughs) We started off by talking about lions, Goliath, lions, and bears. Oh, my, right? Mm -hmm. But as we were talking, it was two things. It was one thing came when Sophia was talking, and the other thing came when we were talking, Joy. The thing that came when you were talking, Joy, is the question I asked or the 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 epiphany or the thought, are the lions and the bears our seasons? Are they our seasons? And see, because we have so many different seasons with every level of faith we increase to, are the lions and the bears our seasons? Right? And then Goliath is just the culmination of every test we've passed. Because remember, Sophia was like, I have a toolbox, right? Mm-hmm. So mm-hmm. David had an arsenal. He had what? A slingshot and some and smooth stone. stones. Mm-hmm. 
He had an arsenal. So are the lion, and this is just rhetorical, just, just to think on it. Are the lions and bears are seasons? And then the second thing, when Sophia was talking, I realized we do this a lot, but we don't realize that we're standing on it. Because there was a couple of things she said. She said, I would just kind of, I'm, I'm going to paraphrase, you know, like, I wouldn't worry about it. I will be still. I would just, you know, know that God is going to work it out. Um, you know, I would find, you know, try and find peace in it, be calm and stuff like that. I'm just trying to reiterate some of the words mm-hmm. she used. But we live the scripture a lot of the times and don't even know that we're actually putting it in, in work. Mm-hmm. You get what I'm saying? Because mm-hmm. when he tells us, don't worry, that's what he means. But mm-hmm. we don't use the term. We don't, some of us quote and say, God said, don't worry, so I'm not going to worry. But some of us say, you know what? It is what it is. And that's, you know, <laughs> that's not you worry. know what? You know, I ain't gonna, I'm not going to even worry about that. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. And then, Joy, you also did say something about like kind of just being still. The word says, be still and know that I am God. You get what I'm saying? So it's mm-hmm. like, whether we've read it or we've heard it, or we meditate on it regularly, we are living it and doing it. And you know what? We don't give ourselves enough credit that we are doing what the word says. Hmm. Because not saying that we remix the Bible, but we use words that, you know, in our daily jargon, <clears throat> we use different words, but we're pulling it from somewhere, right? Mm-hmm. especially when we apply it to like what we're talking about now going through seasons trials and tribulations yeah. and things like that we use different jargon but do y'all agree or don't agree that we do do that and it's like we clearly don't give ourselves credit that we do it we're doing what he's saying that we're supposed to do yeah i think subconsciously we do a lot because because the word is in us well for people who the word is in but yeah, I th- like I, I can think of times when I'm like, okay, this is the choice I'm making and I'm not even connecting it to that I know the word or that I was fed the word my whole life or anything. But mm-hmm. then there is a moment when I'm like, oh, but that's biblical. But I think at a, at a certain point, it becomes subconscious to you. If you're always taking it in, being true to that life is, become subconscious and you start to really behave that way or act that way hopefully because otherwise all this practicing that we're doing and learning that we're doing is kind of you know it won't be uh what's the word i'm looking for it'll be a waste if we just practice always learning and trying to practice and then we get in a scenario and don't apply (laughs) like it's just like we just forgot it all but yeah, I think it's subconscious. I really do. I think it's subconscious, but I think that it's still because we heard it before or because we we read it before. Like, I think it's still, they're kind of like one in the same. It's just that, you know, the way the mind works, once you have it, you have it <laughs> and you can apply it. So it's not always that you're going to go revert all the way back to when you first received it, but once you have something down pat, you have it. I remember like one of my chorus teachers used to say, oh, you forgot the lyrics. That means you never knew the lyrics. Like he would always say that. And I didn't realize like, you know, at first, you know, it's kind of expensive, but, but he was right. You know, he was like, there's no way you can forget something that you always, that you knew. So he was like, you never really learned the lyrics to this song or you never really learned the music. Because how could you forget it if it's something that that you learned? So I don't know. I feel like, yeah, subconsciously we are applying stuff, but that doesn't um, take away that we got it from the source. You know what I'm trying to say? Is right, that making right. sense? That's yeah. what I'm asking. Yeah, that's that's the that's the meat of the matter, mm-hmm. the marrow that I'm getting to. Like I the did marrow, <laughs> darling, I love it. I have. Um, So I see this kind of, okay, so just the part where you were saying, you know, like resting in him, being still, like we subconsciously not realizing that we're being still. 
to just mm-hmm. know that he is God, right? As the word says. So okay, I'm thinking of this because I'm thinking in the context of David. Okay. And David was a warrior. Okay. So I'm recalling the time when he was out fighting and by the time he got back he and the men they had raided and looted like everything they took all their possessions they they even took his wives like the women Mm -hmm. were gone everything Mm -hmm. they had taken and he i i suppose maybe he 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 took a minute he rested right like he took a Mm. rest but he didn't just do nothing he prayed to see Mm -hmm. if this move was something that God wanted to keep that way or if he should pursue. Mm -hmm. And God, and so God then told him pursue Mm. and you know, and you're going to recover it all. So I think in the being still, right? Like we be still, but it's not that there's a nothing that we're doing. It's not that we're just not picking up the fight because we're soldiers in the army of the Lord. And we actually in in our arsenal, right? Our full armor, we literally have a sword and that sword Mm -hmm. is not for nothing. Like we are armed to fight. So I think in the being still, And knowing that he is God is almost like saying, okay, you're in charge of all of this. So Mm -hmm. what is it that you want out of the situation? And then understanding from him, if he expects you to let him fight this battle, like, you know, fight, because he's going to fight both battles. But theoretically, like you physically do nothing and just watch him move. Or do you pursue and still watch him move in the pursuit? Yeah. So that was like one thing. And then Tree, you asked the question, are the bears our season? Again, I'm looking at the context uh, uh, for David. And like, I think that the bears are in the season, but I really feel Mm -hmm. like the, the catalyst that, that defined David, like that Goliath wasn't, the Goliath isn't the peak of what you're called to do. For for me, as I'm looking at it, Goliath defined to everybody else who David was. Right. Because they didn't know him, right? He was a little shy. Even, mm-hmm. even in the scriptures, when he's like, I'll fight. His big brothers, who who had been out laughing. roaring in the public, were laughing like, you little yeah. scrawny thing. You, you ain't going to do nothing. You can't do anything. But David, literally, outside of their knowing, was slaying bears and lions. Right. So Goliath was, was just the physical. It defined to everybody who they were actually looking at when they looked at David because they did not know him. Even though he had lived among them and he had probably done everything that the rest of the family had done, they had no idea of who he really was and what he was capable of. Mm-hmm. None. none. It okay, proved so, to the world who he was. Okay, so this is going to be for another, this is going to be a topic for another time. Wait, can I say this one what? thing? Because I just feel like go ahead. God, I, I won't forget it. Go, God go, go. Publicly identified David through the fight. Goliath was God's way of publicly like saying, This is my like this is my son in whom I well please, right? Like, watch me. Okay, anyway. Okay, okay. Okay, I, so I how we handle our Goliaths defines what for I us? think Goliath tree, you still tree, you need to get your point in there. Oh no, this okay. point is very I think good. Go Goliath, ahead. I won't remember it. I won't Goliath forget. Goliath is the point that we get to. It is not the I don't think Goliath is the climax. The actual purpose. I think it's he just Goliath the is used to show who we are. Goliath is you the taking down of Goliath is used to be demonstrative of who God has sent us here to be. David was a warrior and he was a king. It was the king's position to keep the kingdom safe and Saul could not do it. The king, I think, 
somebody out there correct me if I'm wrong here. Put it in the comments. The king was supposed to slay the threat to the kingdom. Saul could not do it. Probably because God had already anointed David as king. So the king did keep the kingdom safe. But nobody knew that he was king. Mm -hmm. So the Goliath was God's obstacle to prove and show the world who his called one was. His called one was David, not Saul. (laughs) Y'all know I have questions and ideas for days, but this... (laughs) It's to ponder on. We got two more times around the sun before, but this is going to be the next topic. So stay tuned for the next time we do this one. Everything you just said in mind. We know someone else in the Bible who took a very similar path and God also proved to the world who he was and his purpose, right? Can you guess? I'm on the edge of my seat. (laughs) Because as you were talking about it, I'm like, oh my gosh, God used the cross to prove to the world mm. who Jesus was. Who Jesus was. Because some because of them, some of them believed, mm-hmm. some of them, some of them was like, okay, he the Messiah. And some of the other ones was like, nah, he ain't nobody. Oh, you said, and they even mocked him. We going to get to the next time, but just think about yes. it. Just think about it. Goliath was David's. The proof coming out was. to the world. Yeah, 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 yeah. Right? Yeah. I don't want to use coming out. Uh uh-uh, uh, no, no. The proof no. that he was. <laughs> no, we're not the using that. The proof that he was, the reveal, the revelation. The, re- was. the revelation. Hallelujah. Mm-hmm. For 500 Alex. Revelation, revelation. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Okay, so, but finish. Finish what you're saying, though. But, um. You need a sound effect. <sighs> <laughs> the crowd goes um, wild. <laughs> and God used the cross. To reveal that Jesus was who he said he was the whole time. Because yeah. did they not have egg on their face? Yeah. When, came, when the clouds got dark and the earth started to, to tremble. Yeah. Was they not was they not out there scared? Was they scared? They were scared. You you think they were scared? They were scared. They were was I, they not? Just I, like this <laughs> to the point where <laughs> like with David. Oh then mm-hmm. everybody wanna have a song for David when he coming back through the town. Now y'all wanna big the man up. I don't wanna oh, hear that. Kill the thousand, David. I don't wanna hear that. Get off thousands. me. Get off me, Groofy. Get off me. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> not a man got Groofies. Cause you, you done slayed Goliath. Oh. But before the end, you know, you got jokes. So Yes, just keep that in the in your cranium because when you were saying, I'm like, she don't even realize how good of a nugget that is right now. Mm. She's talking a lot. She's talking. She on that. She on that. Mm. But yeah. So when we see our Goliath, what are three things that we can do so that we are a testimony of Christ revealing who we are in Christ? Uh, What are three things that we can do in that moment? I think one thing, we can't lose heart. Mm -hmm. And we have to remember, Joshua 1, 9, just be courageous. Mm -hmm. Just be strong and courageous, right? We can't lose heart. And we have to remember and trust the God that we've experienced up to that point. Because all along, David was killing lions and bears with his bare hands. He didn't even use, well, maybe he did at some point use the sling in the stones, but Mm -hmm. there were accounts with his bare hands that he was taking them down. He had already experienced the power of God working through him where nobody else was there. And I feel like I can say this personally, sometimes when you don't have other people who believe in you, the Mm. way that you believe that you can do a thing in the room with you, sometimes it's a struggle to press through. I've experienced that. And so I can be at my finest hour when I know that everyone around me believes that I can do what I'm saying I'm there to do. But David had to stand before Goliath without anybody else believing that he could do Mm -hmm. what he said he could do. So he had to believe it. He had to remember the experiences that he had with God 
And then he had to not fear and just be courageous. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Well, I want to piggyback off of that. And um, I want to make sure I quote it right. Because you can always go look this stuff up. I'm just going to say it right. The song by Donna Lawrence and the Tri-City Singers, you have to encourage yourself. And it's not encourage yourself in self. It's encouraging yourself in the Lord. Like Joy said, it's going to be plenty of times walking through this life people up in your face every day but yet don't encourage yet don't do anything to lift you up support or anything like that but you still somehow make it through you don't look like what you've been through you don't sound like what you've been through and that's from being held in his hand so yeah I agree Joy you gotta be bold Mm-hmm. and then we can't forget to pray because that's our that's our language that's our love language to christ yeah. that's our communication you gotta pray you have to pray and it's not like in a despondent kind of way like oh lord help me jesus out of this you gotta pray and i'll even go a step further you gotta worship through that thing because that confuses the enemy because he thinks that you only worship and praise God when the going is good, but no, we got to praise him when it's the worst. And then we're not praising him just out of just, Oh, I got to praise him because no, you praise him from a foundation of knowing that he has brought you through something else before and he didn't leave you. It might not have seemed like he was there. It might not have felt like he was there. It didn't sound like he was there, but you just got to say, thank you. Thank you, God. Thank you, Jesus. You just got to praise him and worship him through it all. So I would say the three things is encourage yourself in the Lord, pray and worship, worship through it. Mm-hmm. I have my third nugget that um, you, you got honey mustard sauce. Know. No, no. <laughs> it's plain. Oh. <laughs> it's plain. <laughs> that um, David also knew who he was in God. Mm. And he he had clean hands. So you have to also, oh, yeah. I think, understand that w- what your position is. Like, are you good to pursue this battle? Because, And I'm saying that because he called Goliath an uncircumcised Philistine, which indicates mm. that David was very aware that oh, he, yeah. had, he had right, legal right, because of how he was in covenant with God versus how Goliath was not in covenant covenant with God. God. So Mm. he trumped Goliath just by the covenant that he had with God. That was a good question, Sophia. Yeah. Yeah. Sophia, what would you say? What I like y'all answers, (laughs) but I was thinking like just a reiteration of some of the things that we said so and so they might be kind of synonymous with what you guys said but I was thinking like um standing still in it and Mm -hmm. and like Joy said not necessarily not doing anything but just standing in the know or like knowing who you are in Christ Mm -hmm. um so not panicking in other words you know or not letting your anxiety let you make a decision that joy i forgot what you said that day but or i don't know if that was today but one day you said that it was more about um god saying you let your you let your i put my pain before his your pain Mm. yes say it joy say it again he told me i put my pain above his purpose yeah Um, and sometimes you know like i really like how for a little bit we were talking about you know, just the significance of standing still and letting God do what God does, like letting him guide, you know? Yeah. Um, and then, so that was one of my things that I thought. Um, I really like the addition no, of- I'm I'm sorry, Sophia. That's not what he said. Above his plan. I put my pain above his above plan. Above his plan. Yes, yes, yes. Because that's the anxiety when you're I worried about it and you're like, let me just respond because I'm- feeling this way like that's anxiety and then I really like that we focused on courage because um we have to we have to know that we are walking in God's strength not our own strength so 
you know, he's our refuge one for us to, you know, be safe in, but also uh, he's our strength. And I think that that was kind of like the boldness or correct courage that y'all just were saying that David had, like he knew that he, I don't even think he felt like he was going that. I don't know. But and I don't, he wasn't gonna win. Like he right. wasn't gonna win. That's what I was saying, but I don't know if I'm right <laughs> yeah. when I say it. Yeah, I'll show you, know, you better than I can tell. Like he yeah. was bold, no, I think you he know? was definitely convinced. He was yeah. convinced. there was no way he wouldn't give Goliath was triple the size that he was. Absolutely. He was going to win. Yeah. I mean, come on, this guy had the dag on the thing the the thing, you know? Slingshot. With a giant. Like, if I were going to face a giant and that's all I had was a slingshot, uh, mm-hmm. I'm Can having second thoughts. <laughs> I, I have the scripture right here. We're First having Samuel. second thoughts. Yes, go ahead. Read it, Joy. First Samuel 17, 48 through 51. It's not as long as it sounds. So it okay. was, when the Philistine arose and came and drew near to meet David, that David hurried and ran toward the army to meet the Philistine. Then David put his hand in his bag and took out a stone and he slung it and struck the Philistine in his forehead so that the stone sank into his forehead and he Mm -hmm. fell on his face to the earth. So David prevailed over the Philistine with a sling and a stone Mm -hmm. and struck the Philistine and killed him. But there was no sword in the hand of David. Therefore David ran and stood over the Philistine, took his sword, and mm-hmm. drew it out of its sheath, right. and killed him, and cut Boldness. off his head. That's bold. Him. And when okay. the Philistines saw that their champion was dead, mm. they fled. Yes. Not only that, you Damn. live by the sword. Right. You die, you by, die the sword. by the sword. Do you, did, do you not hear it in the word of God? Yes. Oh, okay. We heard it. We heard mm-hmm. it. Mm. Yeah. So, that courage is another one that I. So God is our refuge and strength is the second one for me. Like, or just I'm I might I might be getting my numbers blurred, but just sitting in it, letting him be your refuge, and then also being bold and knowing that he's your strength. I watch these two girls. Oh my gosh, y'all. I always talk about boldness in Christianity because I feel like that's something that I'm like, I don't know. Maybe I am uh, bold when I'm, I don't know y'all, but sometimes when I see some people, I'll be like, that girl is bold. She bold in Christ, you know? So I, I always, you know, think like, man, you know, it's just something to it. It's something to the faith of a person who can out loud, you know, do it. Yeah. Who can out loud be a believer and like, and I just love it. And, and not just out loud, but like they're ready to go. It doesn't matter where they're at. You give them the signal and they're gone. <laughs> like they're ministering or they're like getting everybody riled up in Christ. That's just, come out, I don't come know out. Yeah, I don't know if it's their spirit or what, but like I just feel like that's that's a yeah, that's a practicing. that's real. Being bold mm-hmm. in Christ is real and yeah. So that's what I yeah. think. I think like, mm-hmm. you know, sitting in it, understanding he's your refuge, he's your strength, and being bold, like having that faith where you're like, I'm gonna do this. I'm gonna yeah. do this yeah. in Christ's name and I'm going to get Christ's results. Amen. Yeah. Yes. Because like we we're like, oh, I don't know how it's going to turn out. Or I don't know if they're going to get with it, you know? Mm-hmm. But no, like, results. know who you I are like in that. Christ, you know? Like, yeah. like she said, David knows who he, he knew who he was. Even if he didn't know he was a king, he knew who he, he was knew. in the he kingdom, he, he you know? He knew he could take down a beast. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And yeah. You know he what? I think that's the key right there, Sophia, is that yeah. so. And I'll, and here's a transparent moment. And y'all know, right? Because we've had these conversations offline that I'm like, yeah, man, I need to get my power up, right? Like, I need to get my power up. <laughs> yes. <laughs> and you came back with your power. <laughs> but when you say knowing who you are in Christ, knowing yeah. who you are. Because when you know who you are, then you know a thing is going to work. Yeah. So so here, yeah. so okay. So I told y'all 
that <laughs> God told me, right? Like I've, I put healing in your hands, right? Mm. I've, and this has been demonstrated. I have prayed for people. So, and they have been healed by their testimony of it. Even medically, issues that they had weren't there anymore. And even me. I have had <laughs> encounters with demonized people. And, you know, the demons are lashing out at me. And I would like to think I have enough authority and power to cast out a demon, but I've never done it. In one most recent encounter where I was being cursed from head to toe by a demonized woman, right? Like I, she, she gets naked and walks the street. And so badly, I just wanted to like grab that thing by the reins and start screaming, you come out, you come out in the neighborhood, you come out, I said, come out. <laughs> But not having complete certainty oh, right. of who I am in that in that area, mm -hmm. I shirked away from doing it. Yeah. Mm. So I think that there's absolute like the key when you when because we are taught we were started this off talking about purpose. I think one of the keys is just right there, Sophia simply knowing who you are will naturally lead you to your purpose because you will never be afraid to be who you know that you are. Like God has told you a thing and confirmed this thing and shown you, you have, you have solid evidence of this thing. Like David had solid evidence that he was a fighter, that he was a warrior and that the biggest beast he was taking down lions jesus is the lion of the tribe of judah he was taking down mm -hmm. the ultimate beast if yes. he could do that knowing mm. he, this thing had been tested proven and tried within him he had no doubt that he could take down this goliath no doubt mm. no doubt he knew who he was and knowing that led him to purpose because he just lived in what he knew. Walking in confidence. Y'all know I gotta saved. go back to the to the prophets and find out, find out what I can do about find out what I can do about. You gotta go back to uh, where you went to my. <laughs> she should have been at that table in Starbucks. <laughs> okay. So I was oh. casting them out. Okay. <laughs> Listen, she knew who she was that day. All okay. right, people. Oh, gosh. No, you. You. <laughs> Joy. <laughs> oh. Joy came to the table and said, get out. I was just keep practicing. practicing until one day somebody to the left right? of me is going to fall One day somebody going to get, oh, say, gonna get out. Right, she, she exactly. said somebody to the left, right, or gonna fall over to my own work. What? <laughs> oh. oh Lord, please don't let it be me, Lord. <laughs> <laughs> Lord, is it me, Judas? Lord, is it I? <laughs> Uh, I said this girl I came back from Miami casting <laughs> out spirits. No, out but you pride. know what? Yeah, guys, that's oh, what gosh. it is. That's what it is, man. Oh. This shout really, the really helped me taking today. the Americas by storm. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. You know what? I can't, mm -hmm. I can't, I can't, I can't, I can't. She's a trip. She's a trip. Oh. <laughs> So have we reached the end of our sesh? Man. Yeah. It's have, we hashed hashed one. have we hashed it we out? It up. Yes. Okay, so we forgot to pray at the beginning, but I do have a prayer to offer. Yes. Okay. Um something super simple. Something of course I heard scrolling through Facebook Reels. I love Facebook Reels. <laughs> so mm -hmm. We will close on this with a prayer. We have discussed Goliath, lions, and bears. I ain't mean to make that no bars, but I oh did. <laughs> yes! <laughs> All right. So the prayer is this. 
God, I pray for spiritual wisdom and insight so that I will grow in the knowledge of God. I ask mm-hmm. God to fill me with the knowledge of his will for my life. God, I ask for wisdom in all of my affairs so that I make the right, right decisions according to your will. And God, I ask you to increase my, cap- my capacity and my ability to walk in love towards others in you. Mm-hmm. Amen. Okay, that was perfect. Amen. This has been your favorite home girls. <gasps> I'm Atria. I'm Joy. Sophia. <laughs> we always and, <laughs> and this has been Bone and Marrow. Good night. <laughs>